Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by the channel. Now I've got a real classic pattern for you today. This one's called the Casual Dress. Now it was created by Polly Roseboro. Now let's talk a little bit about Ernest Herbert Roseboro. Born in 1902 in Arkansas, moved out to Klamath Falls, Oregon when he was 24 years old. He worked in the lumber mills out in Southern Oregon for many years. He was never formally educated didn't graduate from high school, but got most of his education fishing the area, the Williamson River, and over the next several decades really became a, an expert in trout and cold water fishing and entomology. Now, in 1942, he did take a break from the lumber mills, enlisted in the Army. Now, after the war, he did come back to Oregon, continued working in the lumber mills, but also continued his education in the cold water fishing and entomology of the West. Fast forward a few years, and in October of 1960, he haphazardly puts together a fly with some muskrat. He's fishing out on the Deschutes, and this fly does great for him. It doesn't really have a name, so we just called it the casually dressed fly, and that's a fly we know today, and we're about to tie the casual dress. Now, Mike Valla does have this and is tying the founding flies. He gives a little bit more history on Polly and the, the pattern. Now, a few years later, he writes and self-publishes a book called Tying and Fishing the Fuzzy Nymphs. So this was in 1965. The book gets picked up. It gets published, you know, five editions. I think the last publishing of it was in 1988. It's not actively published right now, but you can still find some copies of it out there. In fact, after doing the research today, I just ordered a copy for myself. Now, about the book... Dave Hughes mentions it in his Wet Flies that it was, you know, a lot of the inspiration for what Dave now calls his all fur wet flies. So is this fly a nymph or is it a wet fly? Well, most books have it classified as a nymph, but even Polly didn't fish it weighted. He kind of fished it two to three feet deep on the swing and sometimes with an active retrieve. So pretty much what we would consider a wet fly. But a lot of people nowadays do tie it weighted and do fish it dead drifted pretty much as a nymph. So it doesn't really matter what we call it. Call it a nymph, call it a wet fly, fish it however you want, but it's a great pattern, can be very effective. So if folks like Mike Valla and Dave Hughes, you know, sing the praises of this pattern in Polly Roseboro, well then you know it's a good fishing fly. So the pattern, it's not all that hard to tie, um, but it's not the easiest pattern. You'll see in this video that I struggle with it a little bit, particularly the ostrich hurl in the head, but you'll get the gist of it. I think it's a cool pattern. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, Polly Roseboro's casual dress. Now this is a pretty big bug. I'm tying it on a size 10. It's a one X long nymph or wet fly hook. And I'm gonna use black 70 denier. You can use thicker thread, especially if you're going to split it for the, the thorax, but I'm gonna create a dubbing loop so I can get away with this thinner thread. So let's take the base all the way back to the start of the bend. Okay, that should do it right there. Now, for the tail, it's the same thing as the, the dubbing and the, the thorax, just muskrat. So you got a patch of muskrat right here, and I'm gonna grab a fairly significant chunk. Well, not huge, but not insignificant. So you see that piece right there? I'm gonna grab it by the tips, and I'm gonna pull a little bit of this gray under fur out. I'll just pull it to the side because I'm gonna use some of that for the dubbing the body. Now let's measure this, okay. See, I want a little bit of this tail to have some of that fluff in there. You see those a little bit of under fur? I don't want it terribly long, so I'm going to pull out the very longest of the fibers right here. Okay, so left with that, and about a hook gap, maybe a little bit longer. It's a pretty substantial tail on this. So let's put a couple wraps right here and, and check it. Now this stuff is very slippery, so it's going to spin around the hook on you if you're not careful. So I'm going to like that right there, but I'm going to have to hold it on while I put these tighter wraps. So I'm holding it with my material hand, putting a couple of tight wraps. Now I'm just going to put some loose wraps up here to kind of bind this in. And I may end up having to trim some of this anyway. Okay, this didn't trim too easily, so I'm just going to trap it 
and then spend a few extra wraps to get my base down right here. Okay, so that tail looks fine. It's, it's pretty bushy, but that's what I want. Now we're gonna use some of that same muskrat under fur and dub a body. So put some wax on your thread. And if you need more than what you had left over from the tail, just cut another chunk, try to pull the guard hairs out, mix it all together, and then we'll touch it on here. And I'm gonna do a pretty thin or fairly tight noodle right here, but a pretty long one, maybe four inches or so, and then I'm gonna spin my thread to tighten it up even more. Okay, I've got about four inches. I'm gonna twist that to get my hook point out of the way. And I'm gonna give my thread a clockwise spin. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it is spinning right there. And some of that dubbing is, you know, catching uh, in that, just making a tighter rope. So let's go ahead and take our dubbing back and we might want to spin it a little bit tighter as we go up. And I might need just a little bit more. Okay, that'll be fine. I got a little bit of a lump right there, but you know what, I'm not gonna worry about it. So what I will do next if you were using thicker thread, you could flatten it out and then try to split it, but you're not really gonna be able to split this 70 denier. So I will just create a dubbing loop right here. And I'm gonna put my more of this muskrat inside this loop. Now, if you have a spinner like this, just a weighted brass spinner, you can put this in it. If you don't, you can do it with the hackle pliers It'll just be, take it just a little bit longer. So what we wanna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and put a half hitch in my tying thread so I can park this out of the way. Now what I will do, I will take another piece of this muskrat. You see this, um, guard hairs and under fur, and I'm gonna put it between the two threads in this dubbing loop, and then Try to line it up, it's kind of hard to see right there, but you see I've got them lined up in between the two, the two threads. I'm gonna to try to even it out a little bit and then spread it a little. Now I'm gonna spin this into a fairly tight rope. And you can leave all that under fur in it. It's gonna be a big buggy, kind of a mess, but See that? We've got that noodle, that rope right there, and we'll pull some of these out, just uh, some that didn't get caught in the, in the rope. Now I'm gonna grab this rope with my hackle pliers. So you see that right there? And I'm gonna probably get about, you know, as soon as it starts wrapping on, maybe three turns. Just kind of pull this back as I wrap it around. And it's gonna be a buggy mess before we're done, but we, we'll have some cleanup and some brushing out to do in just a, just a minute. So that, it's getting pretty bushy. It's about what I want right there. Can I get away with one more wrap? Sure. Let's put one more wrap on and see what that's gonna do for us. Now I'm gonna take my tie and thread back here to the to the thorax and I'm going to catch off this noodle or this dubbing loop right here. Now let's snip it and see what we got. Okay, a big mess, but that's kind of what we want. All right, so let's just pull some of these back and lock them in. So we can work on this head right here. I'm gonna take several wraps back and make this base as even as you can get it right here because we're gonna wrap the ostrich hurl in just a second. Okay, 
So that's our, our thorax and legs, whatever you want to call it. And you might want to, now would be the time to just brush some of this out, see if you have any loose fibers you want to get rid of, or trim any really long ones that you don't want. But I think we're going to be fine right there. I've got a few sticking forward that I'm going to go ahead and trim. So take one strand black ostrich hurl right here, and I'm going to catch it in from the with a thick end with just maybe two wraps of thread right here, and then leave my thread hanging where I want to finish up the head. So three or four turns, whatever your preference here is, it just gives it a little bit of black, a little black front to it. All right, that's three wraps, and mine's falling off that little ledge right there. So I should have made a smoother base. That's a lesson for you. A smoother base would have made this go on a little bit easier, but we made it work. Just gives it that hint of black up there at the, the head. So let's go ahead and trim this excess off right here, and then clean up our head a little bit. Take it right back to the eye and then ramp it back up. Give us enough room for a whip finish. And I think that's going to be fine right there. We'll do a whip finish and then take a look, see if we need to do any cleanup. If you're going to put head cement on it, one whip finish is probably fine. I'm not going to put head cement on it, so I'm going to do two whip finishes right there and call it durable enough. So snip our thread, take the brush to it if you need. If you got any crazy wayward fibers, now would be a time to go ahead and trim them up. But that's it, not too difficult a pattern. A little bit challenging with that dubbing loop, but uh, most folks can, can handle this one. I could have done a little bit better job with my ostrich hurl up there, but you know, it's a fish and fly, so I'll live with it. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.